says, y'all are stuck with me for the day. Might be short, might be long, who knows, because um, as, as we all know, I'll write all this out and then I'll just venture on my own way. I think that's just the way of a teacher. So uh, just be with me and deal with me and have peace with me. Um, anyway, I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning. Uh, we're going to begin the service with the lighting of the Advent candle. We gather with hope around the Advent wreath with hearts waiting for the Christ child. Let, her, let us gather with hearts open and hopeful. Today we light the second candle, the candle of peace. May it be for us a reminder that Christ gives the peace which passes all understanding. Let the hope in our hearts pave the way for peace. In the Gospel of John, let us remember these words of Christ. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. And I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. As we light the candle of peace, may the candle be lit in our hearts, that we might give the peace of Christ to one another. God of us all, we are painfully aware of the world around us, which is filled with strife and unrest. We confess we often live our lives in fear rather than faith. We pray that these flickers of hope and peace might light a flame in our hearts, so that others might be warmed by your love. In this time of holy waiting, let it be so. Amen. Thank you. Okay, and let us look in our bulletins for the call to worship. A voice speaks to us in our dreams, beckoning, urging, or crying. We are called on you because of the or is not speaking to us. In the night, our minds wrestle with worries, problems, and hopes. In the brightness of the morning, we seek a word from God and feel His peace. Let us be attentive to the voice of God to say, and let us worship God in all of His glory. Shalom, shalom. Okay, and if you look inside of your bulletin, the answer is let all mortal flesh keep silence.
say together the prayer of confession. God of mercy, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. Open our hearts to the truth of your words, the truth of your love, the truth of your peace. Help us to see that the way to your heart is through the reconciliation of our own hearts with our enemies, our frustrations, our pettiness, and all our other flaws. The Lord have mercy upon us. He will forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love. Provide us the ability to lean on you in all situations and experience your perfect peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. And as we go through this day, may we feel God's peace. May we think of him as the rock. And may we lean on him for all our problems, all our concerns, all of our troubles. Amen. Uh, this is about 
Um, a 57-year-old man who needed to get his COVID shot, because we know COVID is very peaceful. Um, and he went to get his COVID shot, and he had a fake arm. He put on a fake arm to act like he was getting a COVID shot. That brought me peace. Oops, let me go. Oh, my, my niece, well, I guess she's more my cousin. She said, that ain't water vapor. First of all, horrible grammar. Um, but then she shows this streak. So now I'm living in fear of the chemicals in the atmosphere. What are we surrounding ourselves with? And do they bring us peace? So think about what you're reading, what you're listening to. If you go to Zaxby's on a Saturday night, got a lot of peace going on there, don't we, honey? <laughs> did I hit the curve? Did I not hit the curve? I did not hit the curve. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, was, that was a real peaceful moment last night. It ended with, don't talk to me. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so think about what you're, what you're, what you're surrounding yourself with. All the people, all the problems, all the worries. Just consider that as you go through your daily life. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, you are the Prince of Peace. That's a term, Lord, that doesn't make you sound so big and bad, but the fact that you are the Prince of Peace gives me the sense of someone who is kind, and loving and that is exactly what you are Lord so help us as we go through this day to try to turn to you every time that we have a struggle and may we know that you are there that you are our rock and our Redeemer it's in your holy name we pray amen
Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken. Two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done.
As I said a little bit ago, I'm going to try not to deviate too much. Your significant other, it's up there if you want to sit with her. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So the name of my sermon obviously is Shalom, Shalom, which is peace upon peace. Um, and so as we speak of peace, we always think about the baby, you know, the cute little baby that was born on Christmas. And as we think about Advent, we think we know there's hope and there's peace and there's joy and there's love. And so I keep thinking of this little baby and thinking about when we see a baby, we kind of have all these feelings. We have hope, um, that hope for one day this little baby's going to grow up and be a wonderful human being. The peace as he sleeps or she sleeps and how sweet they look and then they wake up. <laughs> the joy they bring is they make their little cooing noises and they look at us with their sweet little eyes and it all oh, it just fills our hearts with joy. And then the love, the unconditional love we have for babies, no matter what they do, we just love them because they're just so cute and cuddly. And so there we have the Advent season, but not really. So this cute little baby, yeah, it's all, it seems all sugar and spicy, but it's more than that. It's a lot more than that. Because Advent is a preparation. A time when we are supposed to be looking at these four elements of hope, peace, joy, and love, and preparing ourselves for what Jesus has to offer us. So, I'm going to skip that. So, anyway, um, so I want to think about peace and what we consider peace to be. So, I thought about some things that I kind of feel like bring me peace. Uh, so, maybe when I get the house clean and it looks really good and it smells like Clorox, the best smell ever, and I sit back and I look around and I'm like, Oh, that feels so good. What a piece. Okay? Or maybe back when children were little and they would start quarreling and they're fighting and you go in there and you intervene in that sweet, sweet way. And finally they find peace and they're in their play and monopoly and you sit back and think, oh, isn't that wonderful? There's your peace. This is still not the peace that we talk about this day. We talk about shalom peace. And shalom is a Hebrew word. And it has many meanings. First one being peace. And harmony. Wholeness. Completeness. Prosperity. Welfare. And tranquility. All of these words are wrapped up in this word of shalom. So I went to find a story on peace, and this was about the only one I found, but it was really good. So there was once this king who lived in his kingdom, and he wanted to get a sense of peace, and he wanted the sense of peace through artwork. So he got a great many painters together, and he told them, okay, I want you to create me a serene, peaceful picture, and I'd like some mountains in it. So all of these wonderful painters go and they start painting their pictures and they all come back together and they share their, their paintings and they're kind of voting who's is the best. Well, this one painter painted a picture and it was a beautiful mountain and with snow on the top and it was the sun was glistening down on it. Uh, there were little fluffy clouds in the sky and in the, there was a lake at the bottom of it, and in the lake was a perfect mirror image of the mountains. So, of course, all the painters were going, oh my goodness, this is gorgeous, how peaceful, 
beautiful, and so this is what they chose. But when the time came, the king chose another one. He chose this picture of this old, rugged mountain. And there were storm clouds in the sky, and the sky was dark and gray. There were lightning bolts coming down. And all the other painters were going, uh, excuse me, this is not very peaceful. Um, you must be confused because this looks very angry. But then the king pointed something out to them. He showed them that near the base of the mountain, there was this little crack that was in the rock. And out of this crack came a branch of a tree. And in the tree was a mother bird with her babies. And they were not at all concerned about what was going on around them. They were just sitting there peacefully. And that is what peace is. Peace is when there is chaos, and there is trouble, and we are able to say, it's okay. Because we know that we have a Savior who will take care of us and who will be with us. And the only way we get that is through God. It's not that we can rely on other people. It's good to always tell people things, that's fine, because it, it relieves it from your mind. But you've got to go to God with it. You've got to turn to Him and lean on Him, our rock and our redeemer. That is how He is defined. So that's what we need to do. I love the movie, The Pacifier, if any of you have seen that with Vin Diesel. And he comes to this house that is full of chaos and a lot of you know, a lot of turmoil, and he has a saying that he says, we're going to do this my way, no highway options. And that is what God is telling us. We've got to do it his way, no highway options. Because if we try to take those highway options, as in the movie, it was horrible. There was chaos, and, and nothing ever turned out well. But when they followed the path, that their leader had, then everything worked out fine. And so we have to turn to our leader. So, ironic moment. So this week, I guess it was maybe Tuesday night, I sat down, I did my schoolwork, then I started working on this sermon. I listened to a sermon from someone else, and I took all my notes, and then I read some scripture, and then I looked up some stuff, and. So I spent probably two to three hours on this. About 11.30, I decided I'm going to bed with peace in my heart. Yeah, he's laughing. <laughs> I tossed, I turned. I had nothing in the way of peace all night. I thought, oh, maybe what I should do for this sermon is get Sherry to make me this big poster of Jesus, and I'll hang it up on front of the pulpit, and, and that'll, be, that'll be good. What if Sherry's going to make that for me? Am I going to have to pay for that? Yeah, probably I'm going to have to. I wonder if there's another angle I can take about this. I don't know. I don't really know if I like that. Yeah, that was a good idea, but this is what I did all night long. And I kept saying to myself, peace, <laughs> peace, please have peace. Lord, please give me peace. But it did not come. It did not come. Because I was asking God for this peace, but I wasn't actually turning it over to Him. You know, and we do that a lot, don't we? We ask for something, we ask for peace, we ask for comfort, but we won't let it go. We just hold on to it. He is the only one who can remove our, our, our transgressions and our troubles and our worries. I teach... Um, ancient history at my school, and I am not promoting Buddhism by any way, shape, or form. But as I was teaching it a few weeks ago, Siddhartha, am I pronouncing this right? Gautuma? Is that right? I'm asking you. <laughs> Always worry about my, my grammar with Miss Becky here. Um, so Siddhartha Gautuma, and 
He lived in this palace and with much wealth, but his dad protected him. He sheltered him. He did not want him to see all the horrible things that were out there in the world. So he kept him in his palace and, you know, kept him under his control. Well, somehow one day, kind of like maybe Rapunzel, he got out and he saw this man and he was just kind of walking around and he was, he was humped over and in much pain and so Siddhartha went back to the castle and was like, Daddy, what's going on with this guy? What is wrong? Oh, oh, don't worry about it, son, is pretty much what he said. So he managed to get out again. And he goes down the road and he sees a dead man just laying on the road. And he's so confused because he's never in his life seen anything like this. And he goes back to Daddy again and says, Daddy, Daddy, there's a dead what? And so, oh, don't worry about it, son, and it'll all be fine. So, this bothers him. He doesn't understand what all this suffering and death is about. So, he leaves one more time. And he goes to find out what this world is about and how to make it better. So, he travels and travels, and finally he sits under a tree for 40 days. I think it's interesting, though, I always thought that the correlation between 40 and then 40 in scripture, you know, the 40 days and 40 nights. I thought, hmm. Anyway, that was a sidetrack. Anyway, so he sits under there and finally he becomes enlightened. He becomes enlightened that the reason most people suffer is because of their desires. Because of all the wants they have. Because they can't just be happy with what they have. It's always got to be more or better. And so I thought that was really interesting because is that not also our problems too? Why we don't have peace is because we want more. We want things to be better. We don't want bad things to happen. But the thing is, they do. And we've got to turn to Christ Jesus when these things happen. So think about all the stuff we're consumed with. Finances. Politics. Oh dear. COVID. Major. Our jobs. The world. Annoying people. Is that not just, oh my goodness. People, they get all into my skin. But I know I get under their skin too. So, you know, you have annoying people. People who love talking junk on Facebook. Will they love it or will they list it? That's important. So, you know what we're talking about. Some people are, you watch that show, don't you? I don't know. I always, I, always, I usually kind of guess it right, but it's all staged anyway. So these are the things we worry about, that, that we concern ourselves with. Will Georgia win? I was real disappointed in that last night. Stan was happy, I was upset. <laughs> um, I felt like they earned that. Why am I worrying about that? So what, it's a ball game. You know? The things that bring us peace are not found in that. The things that bring us peace are praying and reading our Bibles and calling people, not only the shut-ins, but just calling other people. Thinking of others, being considerate of others, putting others before us, saying a kind word to somebody who doesn't really deserve it. But doesn't it make you feel so good when you do that? And I mean, do it genuinely, don't do it in sarcasm. To do it genuinely with a, with a kind, loving heart. Pray for this world that is a nightmare. Those are the things that bring us peace. So ask yourself, which one do you do more of? Do you consume yourself with the other stuff that I mentioned first? That are worrisome and not important? Or do you consume yourself with the things that God has put us here to do? I know I'm, I'm up for I'm up, I'm up top. Okay? I mean, it is, and most of us are. 
So, the um, story of Jesus in the boat. There you have some problems. So you have Jesus who's sleeping peacefully, all underneath there, you know, having sweet dreams. And then you have these guys who encounter the storm, his disciples, who we are supposed to be his disciples too, and the storm comes. And it's horrible, and it's scary. And I know where they're coming from because I would have been up there freaking out also. I'm in a boat. And there's like a hurricane type storm there. And so I probably would have gone down and, wait, what is wrong with you? You know, I probably would have done that. But Jesus tells them, why are you worried? And he calms the storm with peace, be still. He had it the whole time. He has all of our problems the whole time if we will just release it to him. We are never going to live in a world without trouble and chaos and confusion. But the bottom line is we got to turn it over to him. The last thing that I found is a song that most of us know. I always have to go with a song. That's me. And I've never heard these lyrics. I've sung them. But you know how you sing, but you don't really look at what you're singing? So I want you to hear this. So I'm going to start with the first lyrics. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to protect you there. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carol play. And mild and sweet, their words repeat. A peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Isn't that sweet? Yes. Mild and sweet, lovely. But the second verse, listen to this. And in despair I bow my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth goodwill towards men. Isn't that kind of where we are? Because there is so much hate in this world. There is so much despair. And we can sing the song, but we don't have the peace. But we do have a resolution. It's all going to be okay. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail. The right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill towards men. We'll prevail. But it's only if we go in the right direction. The wrong will fail. Plain and simple. And I never in my life thought about those words. I just sang them. That's strong. That is very strong. So, as you go through this week and this year and this time of Advent, turn your hearts to Christ. Lean on Him for each and every problem you have and realize that the little things did you hit the curb or not? I thought about that all night, but I didn't. Anyway, think about all these things and do they really matter? But if they do matter to you, go ahead and turn to Christ. Lean on Him. I mean, you can even act like you're physically leaning on Him. Because doesn't it make you feel better when you can lean on somebody when you're troubled? You can just lay your head on their shoulder. You can do that, because He is there. Lean on Him. Gain your peace through Him. Amen. Okay, standing up, please. Let us read our statement of faith. We confess that
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim Him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by His grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in the covenant of love, which binds us to God and one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into the newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the life of Scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God, that we may serve one whose kingdom has no end. Blessing, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. And now, if you will turn in your hymnals, we will sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, 121. Two. Mm -hmm. He was 80 black and 
and um, we have to stay here. Okay. Kim, <laughs> a report on two. We've been praying for her for a very long time now. She's at the point, uh, she's in a hospice facility now. Oh, so her, her time is new. Richie Meek. Mr. Blake's a Navy, I think we need some. I didn't, I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. You're good. And Rod Price. Rod. Rod Price. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful. You are so gracious, so kind, so loving. And yet, Lord, we fall extremely short of what you want us to be. Lord, we do not live our lives as you call us to live them. We sin. But Lord, you are a forgiving Father. We know that we can always come to you and seek your forgiveness and you will forgive us as long as our hearts are full of repentance. Help us, Lord, each and every day to get rid of the garbage that we carry. Lord, we can just release it to you and you will take care of our, our needs. If we just cast our cares upon you, you will relieve us and give us that perfect shalom peace that only you can give. No one else can give us that peace except you. So help us today to turn our hearts, turn our minds, to you in all we say and do. And Lord, we know that there are those out there who suffer. Those who are going through situations that we can't even begin to comprehend. But Lord, we know that you also offer them the peace. You offer them comfort. And Lord, that you will be with them. Help them, Lord, to feel you in their presence. We ask this for Rachel Neely, for Sheila Mitchell, her family, and the friends of Bradley, and especially his sweet daughter. We pray for Mike and Michelle as she goes into surgery this week. We pray that the doctors will be able to mend those bones and she will have a full recovery. We pray for Lewis Killian, Doc Martin, Harold, Toot, as she prepares to enter your eternal kingdom. We pray for the Eddie Black family and ask that you may give them your love and comfort during his death. We pray for Ricky Meek, Rob Price, Rebecca Hollander, and thank you, Lord, that she is healing somewhat. We pray for Mark, Highfield, and always for sweet Sadie. We ask all of these prayers for each and every person by praying the prayer that you have given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Are there any announcements? David. Very late. Sign up sheet going on now. <laughs> For the soup lunch after church on December the 19th. If it didn't make it all the way around, we'll have it back here in the vestibule. If anybody wants to sign up, bring soup, sandwiches, crackers, desserts, whatever. Gotcha. So sign
sign-up sheet will be in the vestibule for the soup supper on the 19th. Yum. All right. The final thing that I have for this lovely day is we have a newly graduated 85-year-old in our midst. And we're going to sing happy birthday to Mr. Harold Ramsey. <laughs>
in peace. May we offer peace to others. May we rid ourselves of all the garbage we carry. May we turn to Christ in everything that we do, in everything that we say. May we know that He is the only one who can offer us this perfect, perfect peace. Shalom. Oh.